Welcome friends. My name is Nanan. I spent more than 12 years in software development industry, working as a developer and project manager. I hope uh, this conversation is going to helpful for you if you are preparing yourself for a front-end developer role. In fact, there are many courses available on the internet about the front-end development, but the main point is that when you started learning something, it is so boring, you feel like sleepy. So this course is going to be a kind of conversation. It is experience sharing. So I'm not going to show you the code, do these things for showing the image to uh, write uh, this kind of code for showing a, a list of items so no basics thing but uh, obviously we'll discuss some basic questions uh, that generally a front-end developer face when they sit for an interview okay so without further ado i want to start a conversation how can you revise all the important uh, skills of HTML and front-end related technologies because nowadays when we think about HTML oh my god there are plenty of frameworks available like bootstrap tailwind and um, I don't know who is going uh, who is now using the old technologies like yeah something using Dreamweaver and whereas BS Coda and um, the web developer tool of Chrome uh, these two tools are good enough for creating a nice good slicky HTML and then there are so many tips and tricks are involved in uh, doing this kind of things you you can uh, do testing um, uh, testing using uh, using modern browser and uh, mobile browsers as well so uh, the role of uh, new technologies and techniques are making this front-end development is a little bit complicated when it, you, you are dealing with some just base frameworks and the syntax are a little bit of diff, a little bit different for front-end developers in because who is going to create a simple and static website and nowadays where uh, this particular field is now more competitive with complex functionalities and then you know for that you have to be up to date in front-end development if you look at some modern uh, html page you will see that when the page is loading uh, there is uh, some sort of animation is there and uh, in all section when you mouse over a, a particular area you'll see some sort of movement here and there like a mark you when a mouse over the images the mouse effect is changing so i so when the page is loading fast on the browser you can see some text animation and when scrolling all the sections it is smoothly moving from uh, top to bottom you can see some extra effect on the images and then uh, the uh, there is some sort of parallax effects and then uh, the, the the good quality font and font sizes were well so this is just an example of a modern html web page and if you want to begin a career in the front-end development you have to be competitive as per the modern uh, styles so if you are a beginner i suggest that after having your morning tea just open w3 school and do a revision of all the tags obviously you'll find some tags are very simple you don't need to remember them how to use uh, them what are the attributes you can use 
uh, in this uh, this kind of tags these are uh, you can practice some sample uh, quiz uh, sorry quiz yeah sample um, question and answer uh, relevant to HTML you'll find many uh, interview question and answer on the internet so as I said earlier that in the morning you just open the W3 school and revise all the tags uh, and when I want to see some video tutorial on YouTube or Udemy the problem is that uh, the basics are like a uh, little bit boring because you are coming into this field you are interested to become a front-end developer and you uh, have a little bit of idea basic idea how to create a simple HTML page you know how to set the environment using VS code and your uh, Chrome editors and then then uh, creating a simple HTML page is not a big deal but when you try to research other people's code like a complicated um, template where the animations are there there are some sort of uh, javascript and ajax uh, are used uh, these studying those uh, skills is very important you know uh, when someone want to uh, take this particular career as uh, as a professional goal like uh, you want to earn money from software these particular software skills like so front-end development the problem is that uh, you must need must be aware of using your modern technologies you may be a, a windows guy or a linux guy i don't know which kind of software you know, which kind of operating system you generally use in your day-to-day -day activities so uh, you need these computer basic computer skills which is which is part of uh, past of, part of these front end development journey i i personally i was i was a, a teacher mathematics teacher or a science teacher in in my earlier career in my first uh, years of career after graduation then then I spent uh, six and seven year in teaching and then I j jumped into uh, web development and the computer skills was clear in in fact like like how to manage files and uh, how to um, uh, you'll find some sort of computer related troubles in doing your work like uh, like your internet connection is not working well so in that case I I suggest that they be clear about the technology if you are you know how to do this then side by side try to understand uh, how it is working so this is very important so if you if you don't know the basic infrastructure of uh, the IG mechanism like how to uh, send your work to uh, to the customer looking at looking for the job searching uh, client etc so all those knowledge are relevant otherwise you cannot uh, monitor your skill you will you will understand how it is working but uh, watching hours of videos on uh, youtube will uh, create some sort of uh, knowledge and this knowledge is uh, you need to organize them you know, for your uh, road for your journey to this uh, this new world so if you are a new graduate planning to learn uh, HTML and uh, JavaScript CSS for front-end development then this conversation is going to give you the guide that a friend can give you in case of uh, starting a new career so the first thing first open w3 school slash html tutorial page try to just revise all the techniques that generally a basic front-end developers uh, know um, and uh, let's see how fast i can revise that i'm i'm not going to read 
all these things just uh, try to remember all these things what is the basic structure of an html the um, the header section the body section and then you are starting with a document doc type html as it is html5 page then you need an editor uh, for that you can use notepad notepad plus plus there are bs code whichever tools you like or you can use you know, the paid uh, softwares like adobe dreamweaver and how to install it how to configure it maybe if you are using a mac a mac maybe you um you are working in a software development company where all the devices are mac then in that case text editor is required and you need to know a little bit of shortcuts the basic HTMLs um is uh, uh, is very simple when i when i started a learning based html it was 2005 and uh, we at that time we were using iframe for the top navigations for uh, the side navigation and then on the iframe one page is there i know the software you 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 people don't know these because this is off so obsolete right now uh the it was a front page microsoft front page it was very easy uh, to create a page using the like visual things and then the i don't know why microsoft stopped that uh, particular software and later i think they created uh, uh expression engine this kind of uh, tools but i didn't use that expression engine on um let us revise the elements like header element you just i'm telling the name and i if you are a a beginner level learner then you can remember all this can you tell me a little bit about what is attribute and what is tag what is the difference actually attribute is a part of a tag and then when a tag started then you give some name of the attribute and the value like in case of link with the attribute is href and the value is the url okay if you can answer confidently this kind of uh, explanation during an interview uh, easily your interviewer will understand that he has the basic knowledge but the question is that is he capable to do deliver our complex design into and in working html how you can add animation on this page nothing uh, important relevant to uh, the in relevant to the tags like paragraph headlines and uh, adding color on the font uh, if, how can you add font if you if there is two option a uh, font color there is two option you can add inline css externally css for inline css you have to use the attribute style and within this style you can add properties so these things are very common just i'm revising this thing you know you know a road and you already travel from one place a to place b once upon a time and if you want to travel the same road using a different uh different time i mean you already went to the went to a place uh and you are revisiting that place that that place then you don't you, you will you, you can easily remember all the spot that you uh, watched during these travels this thing revision is like this uh, like when you are just checking all those uh points once again i will find that yes these are easy i don't need to be worried about about all those tags like when you need to use the block code you know if you want to uh, show some text differently compared to other then we use block code similarly there are other attributes like address and then uh, site c i t e site okay so the mm, some little bit of unknown tags are there like b video i don't know video why video is used for you can check on the uh, internet abbr i don't know i know the abbr for the abbreviations okay you can also use some html comments and comments start with the uh, with a angular bracket and uh, an exclamatory sign then double uh, slash and then 
after completing the comment you again again you don't don't double search double uh, hyphen so after the comment you use the double hyphen and then a again a close angular bracket so comment part is clear the explanation sign is only in the starting point remember not in the ending point okay html colors you you can use the direct name of the color but very few uh, colors are there for that you uh, can use the hexadecimal value or rbg rgb sorry rgb stand for red green and blue so for rgb color like background color uh, colon rgb then we use some sort of values like 255 99 and 70 uh, these kind of uh, colors are what is the difference if i use rbg color or hexa color h e x hexa color uh, this is a matter of research but here i think i think we can skip this yeah, because it will make this uh, tutorial more boring than uh, are you getting benefited from this conversation because i think um if i demonstrate things on on the screen and uh, then do something on on my computer i uh, you can watch this and but it will not make it interesting because we after this conversation definitely you will visit these websites like w2c and and or other tutorials then you will see that okay it took a lot of time uh, it is easy not so difficult why i spent a lot of time in in this kind of conversation so dear friend so no one is going to teach you the basics of computer when when uh, you have uh, you have some planning to jump into the front end development and uh, studying web page design and uh, your basic computer skills is very important so understanding how to fix a little bit of trouble that you you generally face when uh, a particular software is not functioning well like um, there is some uh, default plugin or add-on is installed on your browser and due to that it is adding some additional uh, javascript on on your screen and then when when you are saving this uh, record you are adding this additional javascript and then your output is not functioning well i faced this kind of problem when uh, i was creating a an html page for for an email template and then uh, my uh, my antivirus which uh, especially it was uh Kaspar sky was adding some additional javascript uh, link on the page and then i just uh, copy and paste uh, the this code from the source view and uh, paste them on on the email marketing software it was uh, i think mailchimp or uh, or something like that uh, like uh, spring or uh, shaft spring yeah so and the output was not uh, output was showing some sort of glitch and or some sort of problem and then i realized that okay it was the computer knowledge that okay so observing this code is very important observing this code and taking uh, taking decision based on this situation is very important for any front-end developer so let's have a quiz now just uh, checking your uh, knowledge about uh, html how can you add a link so that the when your user had clicking on that link and it is uh, redirecting the page on the same uh, same page or redirecting the user to the on the same page on a different section of the page like uh, clicking on a particular link the page is automatically scrolled down on the footer section how can you do this very simple just um you know the answer okay just adding a a id 
like in the footer section add an id and link that particular text with a hash and id name in in case of href uh, if you in the href value you just add the hash and the id name that's it so you can if you want to send your user uh, to a specific section of another page then add the url exact url reference url and then after this url place this hashtag and the id name and then you can send the user, your user to a specific section of the page and how can you add a fab icon on the page uh, for general question it's a general question generally you face this kind of question uh, in interview like um, what is a fab icon so fab icon is a small image that uh, shows on the title bar and that um, that helps a uh, user to identify a page uniquely and fab icon is generally an image file with an extension and dot ico or you can uh, use dot png as well so fab icons are um, called the identifier of the page and you can use a link tag for adding a fab icon link rel icon and then type image slash x hyphen icon and then the url href uh, attribute the uh, url of the image so uh, is it possible to remember the whole uh, code uh, when you are doing interval just remember the tag that is important for uh, adding the icon like the your link then the attributes are the href for the file name the file type is image slash x hyphen icon and the real rel value is icon table is most important knowledge area of for any html developer table although uh, you table was earlier the main uh, element for the structure of the page but now uh, all the html pages generally use a deb for the structure and table is generally used for showing tabulated uh, showing the data in tabulated form so table um, has a lot of attributes and uh, doing some experiment with the table is very uh, important you can draw any kind of uh, boxes random boxes and try to uh, convert that design into into html page using tables and here the problem is that your table has uh, so many attributes like borders then the size of uh, of the table then you can set width of any column and how to use style attribute in table understanding the table header section and table um, table body section adding paired and spacing so uh, paired and spacing are two important concepts relevant to uh, the table so generally in the css you uh, set the value of th and td like padding 15 means all the yeah all the th and td cells will use padding of 15 means there will be a padding difference between the text content and the uh, border of the cell is 15 pixel you can set um, different properties for different uh, part like it is like in the NT uh, in clockwise position like uh, top bottom then left right uh, or or you can use a spacing like borders spacing border spacing you can check this code how to use border spacing in case of a table and um, sometimes you when you are reading table related information in html tutorial you feel boring is a boring con conversation because uh, there are various type of 
uh, type of things are available let me show you a little bit of uh, uh, different table sizes uh, that generally you face this kind of sizes so can you create a table like this i think it is a little bit of difficult uh, tax but not so difficult if you do a little bit of experiment with uh, uh, some code and how to add some sort of styling and the table when you are dealing with the with the frameworks like bootstrap you'll find various type of uh, style default styles are available so what is the day-to-day -day activities of an html uh, developer or, or front-end developer here yeah. he just uh, deal with uh, some design designers uh, just give him it in any format maybe it is a it is a figma file it is a uh, adobe xd file or for psd file photoshop document file or sketch file you don't know what kind of format it will be there depending on this file format you if you are a windows user then chances is that you cannot edit a sketch file uh, on your windows you need uh, you need a mac device for that so first thing is slicing you are slicing or uh, sizing all the images how uh, and uh, then and doing part by part like header section and the, and the footer section main body of the page so in in the in this phase you will find tasks like editing the images creating some sort of uh, change removing the background of an image because you want to add some sort of effect and um, the flow is like that you are first dealing with the structure then doing the styling part and after after that you are dealing with the animation part or javascript part part that is very important then uh next important uh, attribute is a list list means ulli if you want to show something in ordered style like one two three number then use ol as of orders list and unordered list ULI most of the beginner level uh, developer face a problem that when they place a ULI in the, in the particular HTML page how to uh, remove that circle uh, list list circle in uh, from the item it is a challenge for them and it is very simple you use the inline style and the property is a list style type list style type is none then it will show no but um, uh, no dot sign before the list item okay it is not uh, so difficult you'll find the solution if you're searching on the internet how to remove this you know you need to know the specific keyword for searching this you'll find information on stack overflow or w3c and uh, if you already know these stacks then your uh, coding speed will be faster and if you need to uh, find out the reference code time to time when you are doing your coding then it will be a little bit slow work the difference between the block level element and inline element is a very common interview question when you uh, enter into an html development kind of uh, interview so what are the major block level elements like address article aside uh, aside block code uh, and canvas uh, and deep oil p you know so many such sections uh, then then table uh, then ul video main and uh, figure figure caption map all those items are block level item block level items are always start with the new line and the browser automatically uh, add some space after com after completing this block so space means a margin it adds some margin additional margin and uh, inline elements are uh just opposite inline elements are like a tag then 
um, B and then select the um, small span and, uh, then the strong sub sub for the subscript then S A M P S A M P do you know why S A M P is used S A M P is used for uh, the program output on your HTML page it is a very uh, common co interview question S A M P what is the meaning of S A M P the next level knowledge is about dealing with the class and the id id in for any section for any div you can add an attribute like called class and name uh, a, a unique name for the class and if you set some property for this class you can reuse it again and again that is uh, that is a beauty that is the beauty of css uh, coding and if you use a class particular class like um like body paragraph or a class name using a lot of class name uh, is is a part of creating a new uh, web page and if you use id instead of class as an attribute then this particular property will be unique throughout the page and in a page you can use id for one time you don't uh you cannot use id multiple time like class okay very straightforward simple question what is the use of iframe iframe as i discussed earlier in the earlier days i use iframe but do not uh, make your answer like round and round instead just straightforward answer the question what is iframe if you want to display another web page on your page then we use the tag iframe very simple question so iframe has some attributes like you can set the width of the page you can add some title and uh, you need a the url of the page you can use a page from your website or other website in fact you can show google on your website in on some area but some website will not allow to show their content on an iframe then in that case your your customer your client will ask you that show me that particular website on my page but when you are using the tag it is not showing on page because uh, in that case the urls are i ip specific that means uh, depending on your website IP address it is it will not show the content so remember this particular uh, uh, logic otherwise it will sometimes help you now a little bit of interesting um, interview question like on a page you have an iframe and there is a link below and you want to show another page on the same iframe by clicking the link at the bottom of the icon uh, bottom of the iframe in that case what you will do very simple uh, there is a property for the i um, for the iframe and it is called target just name the iframe like when you are placing the iframe at the first place and then add an attribute called name and call it something like uh, top iframe or anything and use this same name just uh, remember that name should be one word and uh, just place this uh, name in the in an attribute called target in any link so if you are using the target attribute in a link so the target will find this particular iframe and it will show the url on that particular target so how do you use target in a in a air tech is a nice interview question in fact I, if i am taking your interview i'll ask this question now it's time to discuss a little bit about javascript if you want to use javascript on an html page uh, you, you can use the script tag anywhere on this page and within the script tab write your javascript code and uh, suppose there is a id uh, called deep id demo and you want to change the content of this id using some uh, text like hello world and remember this um, 
javascript code like document dot get id get element by id then write the id name within parentheses and then dot uh, inner html without watching this uh, kind of text remembering the you know without practicing this remembering this uh, is a little bit of difficult thing uh, but if you know the references and you are practicing this again and again it will not difficult because uh, you know how to uh, write this code and when you are writing something your uh, text editor will give you some sort of suggestion so document dot document means you are selecting the whole document and get element by id as i understand that it is this particular code is specifically targeting one id and dot inner html means it is selecting the inner html of this id and you are setting a string as value of this inner html and then placing replacing it so when the page is loading looking at the script tag it is changing the inner html of the uh, id and that is the concept and understanding behind how to uh, work with uh, the javascript some common use of javascript is manipulating content of a particular id adding some form validation or some dynamic changes on the content but from uh, this is the basic understanding obviously javascript is playing a major role in creating animation creating uh, some advanced level effects on your html page again another interview question this conversation is going to uh, give you some revision on your html knowledge so uh, you if you are a little bit of beginner level developer then this conversation uh, is going to help you uh, like like uh, testing your code knowledge okay so my next question is uh, what is the use of no script very interesting suppose you are using some html code using the script tag and the particular browser is not allowing HTML, uh, JavaScript code. You are using JavaScript using script, uh, starting with script and closing with script inside that. You are writing a very complex JavaScript. And the browser of the particular client is not um, uh, supporting JavaScript. In that case, you can add a no script cat and tag after, after the script and write that your browser does not support javascript so as a result uh, it will not show this kind of uh, this kind of message and the user will understand that he needs to enable the javascript of his browser now the next question is what is the difference between the absolute file path and the relative file path when you are adding some file in your web page as a as an image like source image a image source file you can use two type of url exact url that means www your website slash image folder than the file name or you can you can use only the folder name and the image the images slash uh, folder if the particular page is uh, located on on a directory where uh, images is a subfolder of this directory then you you can write only image slash the uh, file image file name if it is uh, the image file is located in a different subdirectory then you can use dot dot slash so uh, the best practice is to use the uh, relative path instead of the exact path otherwise when you are moving your site from one uh, one server to another server it will show some sort of image error due to path uh, path of the file so my tips is going to help you in uh, learning html as a front-end developer and it is not the uh, exact tutorial that is covering everything of html in just one video and you are just feeling bored and sleepy after watching this uh, animation lot of uh, jargons uh, some things are new uh, uh, not unknown to you because 
when a, a instructor is uh, teaching you these particular skill he is not aware of your background uh, maybe you have already created one nice html page and um, you think that my knowledge in html is not sufficient i want to improve i need a road map to improve this and um, i'm something uh, i'm missing and uh, in that case these tips is going to helpful for you if you are still watching this uh, video till up to this uh, section or you are uh, it is going to help you and the, uh, the there is another uh, another thing is that when you face a problem and finding a solution from the google or other resources is very uh, very important i was uh, thinking mm, about mm, revising all the html related uh, information or HTML related knowledge and I um, I was trying to create a simple video showing all the basics but the problem is that again it is really a little bit boring because you don't know um, the audience is already aware of some knowledge and you are uh, showing the same thing on on the computer screen from ABC and it is not going to helpful for actual professional so i'm i'm looking at uh, the people who are going to take it as a profession and uh, i i don't think you need a computer graduation for that or an, a, an advanced level knowledge in computer just you can start uh, creating front-end development try to adopt the those skills in your work to show create some sort of portfolio and then you can monetize your your skill you can get uh, some online uh, project uh, or you can join a local web development company as a front-end developer now again the quiz time uh, I quiz a uh, question answer or interview time okay I, you already familiar with the element meta why uh, why you use a meta in a particular uh, page because this element is used in the header section of the page and it is a very important uh, element for setting various type of uh, properties of the page like character set of the page like page description like keywords of the page then the author of the page uh, document generator uh, then then if you want to refresh the page in every 30 second or or if you want to set the viewport of, of the page so viewport so meta important meta properties uh, attributes are character set you know uh, character is, is important for what type of character you want to show on your um, web page generally utf-8 is uh, the common character set for html pages if you are writing the, your web page in english okay for other language i think the character series set is a little bit of different okay and then uh, the keywords the description keyword and description are helpful for seo purpose author you can add author name website author name in using the attribute name and content then the uh, viewport is for very important property for making the website responsive why we use viewport code is very important tips um, first view code uh, viewport has two attributes in the content area in the content section first we give width is equal to diverse width what does it means this means that this page is uh, this page it will follow the screen width of the device and uh, the next is initial scale is equal to 1.0 that means when initially the page will be loaded on the browser it will uh, sh show uh, the zoom level uh, it will show the initial zoom level My, that means the page will not zoomed and this is this knowledge is very important if you do not use this uh, tag then 
your page will not show responsive behavior when someone is reducing the when the user is reducing the width of the page some tags are relevant to layout of the page they are symmetric tag like header nav um, section all are block elements a side article and footer and these define different section of the page first of all uh, what is the use of a site this is a question interview question generally you face when you go for interview uh, it defines the uh, content aside from the main content uh, like a sidebar or etc mm, and uh, generally you can place a an ad or some sort of uh, javascript code there and uh, these techniques are helpful uh, for creating the layout of the page so html symmetric i is uh, something that you can study what is symmetric item and non-symmetric item non-symmetric item are deep span etc symmetric items are like form table uh, articles so symmetric element clearly describe and the uh describes me meaning to both the browser and developer okay what is html entity because uh, the character set or has no sign for some symbol uh, we use uh, the entity character entities like entity name or entity number for showing some uh, symbols like a dollar sign or a or a pound sign or a copyright sign the entity name name for copyright is ampersand copy semicolon and if you want to use the entity number then ampersand hash 169 so it is not easy to remember all the number so you have to use some references you can save this from the internet and uh, the, there are some critical signs uh, generally we face in non-english char character and in that case you have to find the relevant uh, character name for that as the social media is growing fast and in our conversation in article we use various type of emojis and emojis characters are part of uh, giving some sort of emotion to your content and html developer uh, uses various type of uh, code character code for emoji characters like smiley or love sign or or something like that uh, so you can use ampersand hash and a particular number for emoji your character set must be utf8 and this is how you can use emojis understanding the url encoding is also important tips uh, like you want to link a page on your page and that uh, link or if, uh, we want to link a file on your page and particular file is using some sort of space in the name or um, in that case it is difficult to add a space in the url so the best solution is encoding the url in that case the space is converted into another character and when this url is uh, typed in the uh, in the address bar it uh, shows the exact file so url encoding you will find a uh, tool that uh, generally convert a, a url into encoded url and you can do this easily another co interview question what is the difference between html and xhtml so xhtml stands for extends Civil hypertext markup language so it is generally xml based version of html what is xml you, you need a separate video on understanding the xml and uh, in uh, the major difference is that when you are writing something as an html page your browser will ignore a little bit of error in in the code but when you are writing something in xml it will follow some strict rules and it will handle the error so generally uh, the dynamic pages with uh, 
some database use x html but now it is obsolete in x html the document type needs a little bit different code at the initial line whereas in html5 you can just use document type html tag in and uh, xhtml is a long tag you can find this in w3c's uh, w3 schools website and i refer w3 school because it is a very good simplified document of html uh, for a beginner level learner next interview question or and uh, topic is form can you tell me the the, the basic code of a form in html yes the form is uh, is a semantic tag form start with the with the keyword form and close with slash form and inside that we place uh, the form elements like label of the input field label and for which particular input field each input field has a name so input started with type what type of input field is it may be check or a submit button or or a simply text field so input item has a uh, type attributes like type id and name and uh, obviously another thing is value so if you are only doing the front end part of the html work you don't need the the, the modification that relevant to uh, back end coding and uh, you can just uh, match the layout of the design and the form using your html code and css mm styling the form using css is another skills and then we will we'll discuss that in in our style related conversation uh, or css related video what is the major attribute of a form tag the major attribute of a form tag is action and method and target these are the major attribute in action you uh, provide an absolute url of the May page like after submitting this form the page will be redirected to that file and uh, there is a and there is another attribute called math get and method when you use uh, post uh, um, sorry there is another attribute is method method has two values post and get when you use post then all the form data is uh, sent to that particular file that is written in the action and if you use get then all the data will be sent to the url of the redirecting url so what is the major difference between get and uh, post uh, when you use get it append the form data to the url and um, when you use uh, the post method then the form data is uh, sent uh, to uh, to the next page and an HTTP request so form submit the post uh, so if you use a post in a form uh, then uh, data is not going to the URL that is the major difference and another important difference between get and post is that when you use a post method there is no limit of the total number of total amount of data from the form like your form has say 50 field you can send all this data using post method when you are using the get method the, there is a character limit like you can send 2048 characters using the get method if the number of data or amount of data is more then the get function will not work for the form so this is a technical side of get and more now we are going to talk about a very important property of html5 which is called the canvas using canvas you can draw something using javascript on your html5 page like you can draw a line a circle so canvas is an element where you uh, that is supported by all modern browser especially uh, the latest version of our browser uh, you can draw a graphics on the fly using javascript and canvas tag has a attribute like the id of the canvas then width and height of the canvas then 
you can draw a circle uh, you can add some sort of effect on the text like uh, outline of the text or adding some gradient so all those things are possible using uh, canvas it is a graphics you graphics html graphics and there is another uh, thing is uh, important for graphics is called svg the full form of svg is scalable vector graphics that means these graphics will change its size depending on the browser size on device size so if you draw something is as an svg file or if you add something as an svg file this particular shape will change when you change your browser size and change your web page zooming effect etc now we are going to talk about the multimedia that you can use on your html page as multimedia item you can add some sound video image animation as part of uh, your html page so what are the uh, video file format that an html file page supports that are mp mp4 web am and ogg there is another image format is available which is uh, helpful for lightweight images webp and the kind of audio file that you can add on your um, html5 page are like dot web dot mp3 dot mp4 mpz and wmv and dot avi just remember this file type uh, i don't know when you are going to use this kind of things and um there are videos you can use some audios uh your audio has some control character uh, control and uh, sometimes you will face uh, some sort of interview question relevant to audio and video related uh, uh, things like um what is the use of track and you, you can use some sort of plugins uh, in your html page as an object so in that case object then the, it has the attribute called data in place of data you can place some images and uh, you know, that will be attached to your html page okay you can also add uh, the youtube videos using iframe or nowadays and your uh, nowadays the html there is some code available for adding youtube video on your html page now we are going to talk about the apis relevant to uh, html because this conversation is going going to be a very lengthy conversation we, uh, we spent almost an hour in this conversation the benefit is that we are uh, just re revising the knowledge relevant to html uh, and if you are preparing for a, a front-end developer role then looking at this information uh, as the basic uh, fundamental knowledge is uh, helpful and apis we are talking about the apis first api is, is uh, the geolocation sometimes a page you want to collect information about the location of the users in that case uh, geolocation is helpful many browser modern browsers support this and for geolocation you have to use some uh, javascript and this javascript is generally uh, the get current position method is used for getting the position and this position means the latitude and longitude of the internet user and basically the ip address or the ip providers uh, provide that information the location information sometimes is not available because uh, a browser does not share that information and uh, if you are using private browser or proxy browser in that case the information is not possible collecting this information is not possible this is a little bit of advanced knowledge but uh, it is it is helpful when you are working with a backend developer who wants information about uh, the uh, geo location related things just uh, go through the documentation on 
on w3 school website or w3c documentation which is an advanced documentation of html and there is some drag and drop feature uh, possible uh, in some modern browser using drag and drop api and uh, it is again a script a javascript related function and uh, like you have to create one to div where you can uh, on drop and on draw drag over on drag on drag over all those properties are a little bit of don uh, uh, complicated for first time and when you are using them them frequently it will uh, you can save the sample code in on your collection every developer has some sample code in their collection just create a uh, local environment in your pc create a lot of code that you can reuse time to time and uh, you'll get a, a collection of sample code you can find various code from other people in Git's, uh, github report tutorials uh, in html related projects you will find those things uh, generally when i was coding uh, front-end developer and i have a collection of all codes and and these uh, codes are helpful when i'm reusing this code in my day-to-day -day work and uh, understanding the web storage um, i don't think these are important knowledge because uh, your main focus is to deal with uh, the layout and i if you are learning these advanced uh, topics it will not uh, not waste your time because uh, if you are not using this uh, knowledge then definitely uh, it is a waste of time but i suggest i suggest just go through these remember this kind of technologies are possible in html like um, session stories and the local stories what is the difference between session stories and local stories the major difference is the local stories will not expire uh, but the session stories will expire after the session that is the major difference this kind of knowledge is helpful when in an hr is taking the interview following some uh, internet based question and answer he, he or she is not aware of the exact technologies but he is looking for the answer that is written in the in the paper so you have to give a good answer and explanation and in practical maybe this uh, knowledge is not helpful when you are working with this kind of uh, things okay then web workers api web workers apis are helpful for running um, some javascript in the background uh, with uh, some effect and as a result your page shows some uh, performance and like on click performance selecting performance so these web workers are uh, like uh, like start counting some number and then stop the counting the some number so your page is showing some sort of effects and when you uh, based on the buttons the, in that case basically these are advanced level javascript uh, that are used in html and part of html like the form input fields are uh, input fields has some sort of validation nowadays in html so uh, there is another thing is server sent event server sent event is also known as ss e api server sent event is uh, necessary when you uh, your server is actually sending some sort of information to your page and it automatically update the page so uh, i think uh, you can check various type of uh, inform example in uh, server side uh, api in html for example your server can send uh, the time related information on a page using a script and uh, this is called the server uh, side scripting so it is again an interview question like what is the use of server sent event in html the server sent event is like 
getting some stock update price or getting some news feed or sports results from server on an html page just remember this thing that server can send information on a page without refreshing the page and some modern browsers support this and you can do show this using a simple uh, javascript code like this javascript code will add some source file on your html page and this source mess this source file will send give some sort of uh, data and that data is displayed on a particular dn id so this knowledge is helpful for an html developer advanced double knowledge is helpful for an html developer when you are dealing with a you know, front end uh, back end developer who is uh, who is creating a page which is server driven and server side information is helpful the next important point is remembering this uh, keyboard shortcut of your ide and it will uh, make your work faster like uh, when you are dealing with browser control r will show the source view of the page if you press the f12 button it will start the chrome's uh, web developer tool understanding all the ui of a web developer tool is very important and how to view the code how to read the code selecting a particular section these sort of skills are helpful when you are dealing with um, the code modification or writing some new code i think i'll need to show i'll need to demonstrate this using using some sort of example and finally if the there is a super important skill that you need to adopt in your day-to-day -day activities like reading someone else code like uh, generally when you face a the actual work environment you get some existing code and finding the debug and debugging this code for specific purpose and then uh, reading someone else code is very important and then uh, you uh, you generally modify an existing template and then that uh, understanding the template you will find in the javascript section at the bottom the previous developer added like 10 or 20 javascript uh, frameworks in the a css section you will find uh, the developer has used tons of css then uh, debugging this page looking at the only the code relevant to uh, relevant to a particular section is very important and destructing other things uh, during the work is very important so this is the super important skill set of a you know, front-end developer uh, when he is dealing with uh, a new work and if the task is like creating some things from the scratch and uh, it's simple design it is faster than debugging another work and uh, when your back-end developer he has a little knowledge about the front-end development and he is instructing you to do something using javascript and css this part is going to be a little bit challenging time taking research work you need to spend a lot of time in finding a solution like sample code so collecting a lot of sample code related slider related uh, related to forms and uh, uh, these are your code collection as a front-end developer so uh, create a folder in your web your local development environment create some sample code collect them you don't know when these are going to be useful in future and uh, in the later uh, next part of the course we'll uh, discuss uh, a little bit the platform specific html development like uh, html development for wordpress less frame development for drupal magento etc and uh, all this front end is going to front-end development skills is going to help you in actual uh, in actual work so i think this conversation is going to be a, con a continuous series uh, it is not the end uh, so come back to the next episode and we'll 
discuss more and more about about front-end development thank you very much for watching this video till then take